While some characters develop a fandom, others develop a hate them, and it's difficult to find a cartoon character more maligned and despised than Scooby Doo's nephew, Scrappy Doo. The character was introduced to the Scooby Doo franchise in the late 1970s in an attempt to bolster ratings and save the show from cancellation. It was a bold shakeup and it worked. Audiences seemed to respond well to the character and the show's ratings instantly improved. But not everyone was happy with Scrappy, and over the years the pup has been dragged through the mud, being mocked in Cartoon Network commercials, humiliated in other shows, cast as the main villain in the first live action movie, even fan fiction about his murdered corpse popping up in Miami went viral. Scrappy has even become synonymous with the concept of jumping the shark, and his name has been used to refer to characters being introduced to series which have caused fans to unintentionally hate the character. So how did Scrappy Doo go from savior to villain, and is all this hate justified? Join us now as we look back at the development and the legacy of what has become arguably the most divisive character in the history of Saturday morning cartoons. By 1979, after 10 years on the air, the staff at Hanna-Barbera realized that the Scooby-Doo formula had become old and repetitive. Previous attempts to revitalize the show included celebrity guest appearances and even the introduction of Scooby-Doo's dim-witted cousin, scooby Dum. but the show's ratings continued to steadily decline. In the face of the show's declining ratings, ABC threatened to cancel the show in favor of an unnamed pilot from Ruby Spears Enterprises, and as a result, for its 1979-1980 to season, Scooby-Doo was given a major overhaul adding the character Scrappy-Doo and changing the name of the show to Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo. Scrappy-Doo is Scooby-Doo's nephew, the son of Scooby's sister, Ruby-Doo. His origin story is told in the introduction to Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo, and years later his birth was detailed further, revealing both Shaggy and Scooby being present at his birth. Like Scooby, Scrappy is also a Great Dane, but, unlike his cowardly uncle, is known for being headstrong and always willing to fight the various villains directly, rather than run away from them. Scrappy in many ways reflected the life of his creator, Joe Barbera. They were both born in New York City, Scrappy's father never appears in any series, even for his son's birth, and Joe Barbera's father abandoned the family when Barbera was 15. Joe Barbera's maternal uncle Jim filled in as a father figure, and this is also reflected in the show. Scrappy underwent many changes over the years, but what always stayed the same was his unwavering admiration and loving devotion towards his uncle Scooby. After hearing Joe Barbera's description of the character, writer Mark Evanier was significantly reminded of the Looney Tunes character Henry Hawk and incorporated what he knew of that character into the script. Mal Blanc, the voice of Henry Hawk, was the first choice to voice Scrappy Doo, but reportedly wanted too much money to voice the part. A variety of famous voice artists were considered for the role, including Frank Welker, who coined Scrappy's catchphrase Puppy Power during one audition. Ultimately, Lenny Weinrib was chosen to voice Scrappy. Weinrib lasted for the first season, only to be replaced by Don Messick, who also voiced Scooby and would continue to voice Scrappy throughout the 1980s. Saturday Morning Review considered Scrappy-Doo a good idea at the time, and indeed viewership seemed to react positively to Scrappy as Scooby-Doo's ratings went up with Scrappy's arrival. Most of the writing staff had fun working with this new character, and overall, Scrappy-Doo seemed to have succeeded in doing what he was brought in to do. The show wasn't cancelled, and the ratings improved. But not everyone was satisfied. The Standards and Practices Department at ABC were initially worried that the pup was a bad role model for children. Scrappy was intended to be what his name suggested, Scrappy and Feisty the opposite of Scooby, but the network wanted him to be more like his uncle and demanded the character be turned down. As a result, Scrappy's character would evolve significantly over the following seasons. While viewership did improve, Scrappy did manage to alienate a significant portion of viewers at the time, many of whom either found the pup and his catchphrases annoying, or didn't appreciate the fact that the introduction of Scrappy suddenly made Fred, Daphne and Velma redundant and unnecessary, pushing them into the background and sharing center stage with Scooby and Shaggy. But 
Thanks to the newly improved ratings, Scrappy-Doo was here to stay. Fred, Daphne and Velma became increasingly marginalized and were written out of the show completely by the second season. The show now focused on the trio of Scooby-Doo, Scrappy-Doo and Shaggy, which helped the Scrappy character evolve from a hard-headed brawler to a wide-eyed young sleuth, investigating the mysteries as the show still required, as well as acting as a straight man to the goofball characters of Scooby and Shaggy. In addition to Scrappy-Doo, the show went through other major changes around this time. Scooby-Doo started to walk and run anthropomorphically on two feet more often, and the villains of the show transformed from being humans masquerading as monsters to actual, real, supernatural monsters. In 1983, Scrappy-Doo returned in the new Scooby and Scrappy-Doo show, as did Daphne, who joined Scooby, Scrappy and Shaggy in solving supernatural mysteries under the cover of being reporters for a teen magazine. Fred and Velma also appeared occasionally in the second season. By 1985, two new characters, Flim Flam and Vincent Van Gogh, were temporarily added to the lineup for the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, which once again included Daphne. And from 1987 to 1988, Hanna-Barbera Productions produced Hanna-Barbera Superstars 10, a series of syndicated television films featuring their most popular characters. Scooby-Doo, Scrappy-Doo and Shaggy starred in three of these films. Scooby-Doo meets the Boo Brothers in 1987, Scooby-Doo and the Ghoul School in 1988, and Scooby-Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf, also in 1988. Later that year, Scrappy-Doo was finally dropped when Hanna-Barbera rebooted Scooby-Doo and cast the original Scooby-Doo Where Are You gang as elementary school students, a common trope in 1980s children's TV, in an irreverent reimagining of the series titled A Pup Named Scooby-Doo. This was the first Scooby-Doo cartoon in nine years not to feature Scrappy-Doo, and while the show was a success, running for four seasons until 1991, it would also be the last Scooby-Doo series until 2002. Scrappy seemed to have left the lineup on good terms, so it seems strange that his subsequent treatment by Cartoon Network during the following years became increasingly unflattering. In 1999, Cartoon Network aired several Scooby-Doo promos, and one, for the upcoming Scooby-Doo project, involved the gang being frightened to death of Scrappy. In 2000, Cartoon Network released Scrappy Stinks, an online flash game where the sole objective was to pout Scrappy with smutty goo. And in 2001, Cartoon Network aired a bumper entitled Scrappy Loses It, where Scrappy interacts with other well-known network characters and laments that he doesn't receive the recognition and respect that he feels he deserves. In 2002, Scrappy-Doo officially crossed over to the dark side when he appeared in the first live-action Scooby-Doo movie, not as a member of the gang, but as the main villain, attempting to get revenge on Mystery Inc. after they had kicked him out of their gang. Scrappy would go on to make regular cameo appearances in Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law, where the pup is treated as nothing more than a punchline, subjected to humiliating cameos where he is routinely mocked and ridiculed, usually appearing as a corpse. The 2011 series Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated treated Scrappy as a painful memory. A fan fiction story titled Darkly Dreaming Scooby, imagining Scrappy being found dead in Miami, went viral, and Scrappy's murdered corpse became a meme over the years. While DC Comics launched a reboot comics series in 2016 called Scooby Apocalypse, which was aimed at mature audiences, and featured a terrifying rendition of Scrappy-Doo as a main antagonist who dreams of murdering Scooby. By now, Scrappy-Doo is so far removed from a lovable sidekick that we have to ask ourselves where all this hate comes from. In his blog post, writer Mark Ivania suggests that it's a fairly recent phenomenon, and recalls Scrappy-Doo being wildly popular the first few years he was on the scene. Ivania also points out how the character's introduction bolstered Scooby-Doo's ratings and kept the series going for many years longer than it would have lasted without him. But Scrappy's debut was also met with criticism at the time, especially from fans who had been watching the show since the beginning and didn't appreciate Scrappy pushing more than half of the original lineup into the background and immediately sharing equal billing with Scooby and Shaggy. 
Others also felt that the character was too loud, annoying and obnoxious, that his catchphrases got old really quickly, and that Scrappy-Doo was generally not a good fit for the gang or the adventures they found themselves in. As mentioned, the Scrappy character was significantly toned down over the years, but many fans still saw him as an unwelcome addition to Mystery Inc. and much preferred the old gang. It should also be remembered that Scrappy's introduction coincided with a major overhaul of the Scooby format, and what resulted in the 1979 Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo was a far cry from what originally debuted on our screens in 1969, which many fans also didn't enjoy and who then treated Scrappy as a scapegoat. Strangely, Cartoon Network did their bit to fuel the animosity with their commercials featuring Scrappy, and the flames were fanned even further by screenwriter James Gunn, who wrote the screenplay for the 2002 live-action version of Scooby-Doo. Gunn seemed to echo what many Scooby-Doo fans felt, and has gone on record multiple times to offer viciously disparaging remarks about Scrappy-Doo. But maligning Scrappy and running him down had become a bit of an in-joke, almost a mandate among Scooby-Doo staff by the turn of the century, and casting him as a villain in the live-action movie was seen as a manifestation of this and a nod to the growing resentment of the character among fans. Over the years, Scrappy-Doo has become synonymous with the concept of jumping the shark, whereby a TV series introduces a major twist or a new character in order to revitalize the series, but fails in the process. Although many see Scrappy-Doo as an example of jumping the shark, it's not the best example, as the Scrappy character was actually successful in saving the show and was loved by the majority of fans at the time. The Simpsons parodied both Scrappy-Doo and the concept of jumping the shark with their character Poochie, who mirrored Scrappy in many ways. The Scrappy has become a term to describe a common TV trope whereby a new character is introduced to a series but is universally hated by fans, developing a hatedom rather than a fandom. Scrappy-Doo will continue to divide fans for years to come, but let's give credit where credit's due. Scrappy not only saved Scooby-Doo from cancellation, but also breathed new life into the show as his introduction allowed writers to trim the three necessary straight characters down to just one, while Scrappy still picked up the slack and actually solved the mysteries which the format still required. This shakeup helped Scooby-Doo writers to explore new ground, evolve the characters of Scooby and Shaggy, and experiment with new kinds of adventures which involved real monsters, not just humans in costumes, helping the show to successfully blend comedy and horror together. However, many fans still found even the toned down Scrappy character annoying and still preferred the original lineup. While others conflate Scrappy with the major overhaul the show experienced at the same time he was introduced, one which rubbed many fans the wrong way. Scrappy was rough around the edges when he was first introduced in 1979 and was simply forced into too many scenes in the early days as the new format took some time to find its feet. But the character got smoothed out as per ABC's orders and there's a reason why the pup stayed for years to come. But at this point we're talking about opinions and we would love to hear yours. Let us know down in the comments below what you thought of Scrappy Doom, if he deserves a little slack or deserves all the hate that comes his way. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it and if you feel that more people should know about this, it will help spread the word. Also remember to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell notification so you never miss an upload. As always, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more cartoon history.